I'm going to go through a few of the items. I'm going to kick them off to the side and then we're going to tie a few different rigs. We're going to tie a circle hook rig and we're going to tie a, a double J hook rig. Third pull out, right? Is that fish would have to have a corner? All right, guys, thanks for uh, tuning in and uh, checking out what I got coming up next. Uh, starting the season off with a pretty good bang. I got uh, a ton of friends and family this week, so I got a little free time. Everybody wanted to sleep in and uh, take a little break from the water, and we're going to go smack on some trout later. But I was going to take this time to uh, show you how to do a couple different halibut rigs. Um, I'm a big fan of the B2 Squid. Uh, I got the products here. They've got a ton of products which I'm going to go over with you guys when we're doing this. Um, but you can see I fish them a lot. They glow in the dark. They're durable. They give the fish a good aiming point. I think they float the bait a little bit too to keep it off the bottom. Um, but uh, not a, too much. Uh, I just I love them. And the, I've got everybody here in my little general area pretty much sold on them for big halibut so I'm gonna go through a few of the items I'm gonna kick them off to the side and then we're going to tie a few different rigs we're gonna tie a circle hook rig and we're gonna tie a, a double J hook rig this is um, I, I'm not I'm not so much uh, worried about the line as I am the poundage I like the 250 to 300 pound and not because I need it to catch big fish because our main line is only 80 pound to 100 pound uh, the drags are only 19 to 22 pounds so realistically you don't need the big leader except for one reason and it's the chew factor the fish get a hold of it they swallow it deep they've got really violent head shakes and they've got some gnarly teeth and they all bust through the smaller leaders um, so I really like the 250 to 300. I can keep fishing them, especially on my charter boat here. We're on my charter boat today. And I can just keep reusing them with the stainless steel hooks. Uh, they hold up and I, I'm not constantly spending so much time tying rigging. And the fish are not leader shy. And everybody asks me, well, why don't you go to steel leaders? Because steel leaders are crap. They kink and as soon as they kink, they snap and they're not reliable. This mono leader is the bomb. And let me let me give you one more example. I, um, since we were on the topic of chew leaders, and I was gonna show you how to do a circle hook rig and a double J hook rig. Here is a Gibbs Delta halibut jig. Link cod, halibut. Um, I really like these. Uh, one, they make a really good durable jig. Their hooks don't rust very much. Their paint is really good. And I can take off this uh, plastic UV grub and I can put on, this is a, a grub made by uh, B2. There's another one made by B2. I can interchange these. Any grubs you like, any colors you like, you can change them out. But the really cool thing and the design that I liked about this, and I've never seen it before until they did it, um, is how you change out your stinger hook and I'm telling you when you're fishing jigs the stinger hook is key so man they, they don't come off everybody's wondering how it comes off but if I want to replace this jig or this this tube jig I just pull it off and it's I really like how they've got them rigged too they've got two extra barbs on there they're all stainless and it makes them awesome so I can take this off and I could replace it with one of these and I'm not gonna do it because this thing still got a little life left in it give it a little twist find its point but this is the part I've already replaced this hook once because it got bent out so I put one of my gamagatsu hooks on it it's it rusts but I can change this hook in and out and all you do is you snip off a small piece of surgical tubing and if I was worried about that section right there I could just bring it out a little farther, right? Because it's already been wore out by the barb, and I could trim it. You can get glow in the dark surgical tubing. You can get it's a massive. Then you just drive it through.
and now it doesn't come out. A lot of people run those little braided stingers and they like to wrap around and get stuck. This thing stays where it needs to be. And this is what I'm talking about, the chew leader. And in salt water, I don't like aluminum crimps. They, they corrode, they give away. These copper crimps, they're expensive, but they work. And they work really well. And they don't corrode, they don't crack, and they don't let it slip. And what I do after I crimp them is I take a lighter and I melt a little bit and just dab it so it makes a ball there. So if it does try to slip, it won't go through and I won't lose my fish. But that is a chew leader on a Gibbs Delta jig. These other jigs um, are super productive. This one, I've got the skirt off of it and I'll show you one out of here, but they're Kodiak Customs. They're phenomenal. They're awesome on rock uh, on the Ling Cod. Uh, any of our Pacific cod, uh, they just catch a lot of varieties. When the, the current's not running hard and they come in a ton of different colors, but in our area, we got a lot of current, so I try to fish the heaviest one that I can get. But as you can see, I put a chew leader on it and it just ups, ups the ratio of hook to land fish. So this is what they look like rigged. This is a brand new one. They come in greens, they come in blues, and they're super productive. But I will add a chew leader to this before I fish it. So I went over the line. We're gonna put that to the side. I'd like to talk a little bit about the hooks. These are the hooks I really like to use, but they're stainless. And what I've done is they're pretty tight this is so I open them up just a little bit and I offset them and it makes them a lot more productive um, if you go it's got the bite of a 24 rot instead of a 16 but the 24 is super big in diameter and when you're on a charter boat you're stuck to a certain size fish so right now this year it's 40 inches and smaller or 80 inches and larger everything else between you have to let go or you have to buy it and it's through a gaff program but with that said I've already opened this whole box and I've opened them up a little bit more I opened them up about a three-eighths of an inch and what I mean by opening I mean the point to the base the shank of the hook this this section right here and I open them up about three-eighths now they've got the biting ability of a 24 rod but they don't have the diameter. That fish has got to swallow it. So when I'm trying to target a little bit smaller fish, but still want an opportunity of a big one, this is what I do with it. And the reason is, is because when you get a really big fish on a smaller hook, I want it around that jawbone. I want it to be around the jawbone of a big fish. I don't want it to be in the flesh, in the lip of the fish. I want it to be around the jawbone and when the hook is super tight you get the fish in the lip not in the in the jaw so I want this wrapped around the jaw so the landing will be perfect I'm gonna put one of those aside <clears throat> these ones these QI hooks are they come out of the box they are super sharp and they're eight aughts, and this is what I use for my double hook rigs. I'll put two of those to the side. <clears throat> like I was saying, um, the B2 Squids, um, the company pumps out a hell of a product, and they're um, they're they're reasonably priced, and I go through a lot of these a year, so they. I like them in the glow. Uh, we're fishing deep. I want that fish, if you're fishing 300 or 350, or I don't normally fish that deep, but if I am, I want something that they can see. I want an aiming point for them, um, along with the smell of the bait I'm using, either salmon chunks or herring or squid, but I want something they can see. And these things have outperformed everything that I've thrown down there. I even run some of the double-tailed scampies. It's made by a different company, but 
that's those b2 squids will most likely outfish all of this stuff so these are the grubs i'm not going to rig any of these today <clears throat> but they're super easy to rig but i want to show you they're coming out with a new products um we got some 10 millimeter glow in the dark beads and they're they're you know you can get them on amazon you can get them out of fish store but they're definitely cheaper out of amazon <clears throat> I got these scissor clips. I don't know if I went over this before, but these are uh, Gibbs Delta spreader bars, halibut spreader bars. And the smaller bar that you see, the shorter bar always goes to the lead. The longer bar goes to the bait and the hooks. And then this will go to the main line. So you can see these are all rigged already. But the only modification I do to them is they have a um, snap swivel on each end and I found when I hook up on big fish or I snag the bottom and I'm trying to pull it off that this thing just scrunches down and it'll come apart and I've lost some really big fish on them so what I do is I take these 150 pound scissor clips and I rig them and you can see every one of them is rigged like that and that'll go to my bait so that's it. Another thing I really recommend is something to cut the line with really good. And I really like these because I deal with a lot of split rings and they're heavy split rings. So it has a split ring uh, point on it. So you can open up the split rings, change out stuff on your jigs. Uh, they're really handy. They've got a cutter here. They've got other things to bend the hooks, to crimp. Um, they're a handy little tool and they clip on and they're I just got these in the mail and I plan on using them. Uh, one other item too that I really recommend if you're halibut fishing, it's a D hooker. And I'm sure you'll see it in the video. I can't say enough about these things. They grab the hook. It can be really deep in the halibut and maybe you don't want to let that fish go or maybe you just want your hooks back so you can hurry up and get back in the water. But when you reach inside of its throat, it crimps down on the hook and you have total control. Um, it's a great device. I mean, I can't, I got three of these sitting at home just in case I lose this one, but I lost a couple and I ordered more. Now I've got a little float on it. So if I do, the halibut jerks it out of my hand or my hands are wet and slimy and I drop it, then it's floating and I can go retrieve it. <clears throat> but we're gonna get back to tying the rigging. You got they're all, they all come open-eyed when you get them in the box. And what we're going to do is we're going to crimp the eye shut like so. You don't want to leave any gap because your line will chafe in it. Oh crap, that was not good to take grab them. We've got 10 millimeter glow and dark beads everywhere. Don't be afraid to put a little muscle on them if you egg them out a little bit. See how it's a little more egg shaped? Don't worry about it. At least it's closed and it's not biting down. One other thing I like to do, comes right out of the box, is make sure you tehoki it. Try not to mess up the barber, the point like I almost did. And now we're offsetting them. It'll make that hook dig in like a corkscrew and grab a bunch of meat. Halibut have got a lot of biting pressure and they'll hold the hooks flat. They'll flatten them right down and when you pull out you don't get a good hook set. So offset them a little bit. It doesn't have to be anything crazy but it will help with your hookups. All right these have been already opened up and offset also. I did the whole box at home in my vise because it's a lot easier. And we are going to tie a few leaders here. Put those off the side, close to the side. My preferred one in our area on these B2 squids is mostly the pink. Um, so I've got a true glow and a pink and a, just a plain glow 
And this is by far, it seems like it's been my most productive. But I do carry both. Every day is different. I like to mix it up some days and then uh, see how everything progresses during the day. If one seems to be hotter than the other, then I try to go with what's working. And we're going to start out with a circle hook rig. Like I said, I just got these cutters. Now, if I cut these with these crimps, it's going to leave a, a not a very clean cut. It egg shapes, and then it, the 10 millimeter beads don't like to slide over this 300 pound test line. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take about oh, maybe 26, 24 inches a liter. And I'm going to try out my new cutters, see how they cut. Let's see if the bead will go through it. I think I got some on the ground here. If the bead won't go, if it won't go through the bead, then I've got to take a knife. Everybody says, oh, the beads aren't big enough. Well, if you get your line just right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my line at a little bit of an angle to a point. Like so. Now this bead should go right on. See that? Went on really easy. So, taking a sharp knife and just angle cutting it. These ones weren't sharp enough. They still cut, but... So, what I'm going to do... I'm going to take my circle hook. Take the speed back off. I'm going to take one of these copper crimps. Going to do a hook back through itself. You don't need a long tail. And I don't cinch it all the way tight because I want that hook to have some kind of mobility. So it can dig in and hook the fish. If you lock it tight, a lot of times it doesn't hook as well. So I like to leave this. I got it pretty tight to the hook, but it still has mobility. And then what I like to do is, you've got the biggest moon on here. What I want to do is I want to crimp each section of the line in its own hole at first. Okay, so I put it in here, and these crimpers aren't wide enough to do the whole thing. So i got to do it twice. So I'm going to do first half of it. Then I'm going to do the second half. Same exact spot on the crimp. Now I'm going to roll it. So I'm going to move it right back to the back ones. And I'm going to roll it over itself. So I'm going to roll it. I'll do this side so you can see it maybe. So watch right there. And it should see how it's rolling it. And it just gives it a little extra crimp. Now I'm going to move it to the front of it. Make sure you get the whole crimp. And I'm going to nip off a little bit of that, and I'm going to burn that with a lighter when I get done. Now, either I can, now I'm going to run that 10 millimeter bead down. It's a glow in the dark 10 millimeter. I run it down. And then I'm going to take this B2 squid, run it right in the hole, run it down. Now, let's see. Okay, so I got two different lengths of spreader bars too. So I've got one that's a 12 to 16 inch here, and that's the long leg. And then I've got the short leg here, which is an eight or nine inch, right? So if I'm tying for the shorter spreader bars, I wanna make sure that my leader is not much longer than that longest part of the bar. If I make it too long, this thing's going to always wrap up and get caught on my main line. So I'm going to keep this one short because I fish mostly the smaller ones. So I'm going to fish it about here. Okay, just it doesn't have to be, it's not rocket science. And I could either tie a double overhand knot and just make a loop like some of these. This is a, just a double overhand knot and a loop. I didn't crimp it, which I do mostly. But I'll show you another crimp just so you know. You can do it either way. 
but I mostly just do a double overhand on the top. Now here we go, crimping it, same thing. One half at a time on the big moon. And I roll it to the back and I roll them over. And I will burn this one with a lighter also. I'll do them all at the same time here in a little bit. I think I got a lighter on me. Yes, I do. Actually, I'll just show you right now. Move all the gear out of the way. Make sure you bend your main line out of the way so you're not heating it and destroying it or you're going to lose integrity in it. So I bend it out of the way. Hopefully this lighter works. All right, I'll have to find another lighter. We'll do that later. <laughs> All right, so I've got these closed. I've got these T-hokied. And now, with a circle hook and you're crimping, it's a sh lot shorter leader. With this one, you're gonna have a little bit longer leader because it takes, so, you're doing it about three feet, just because we're gonna use some of that line to tie with. So, on my back hook, I could snell that one too, but I'm gonna, I'm going to crimp the back hook, just because it has a little more mobility. It's not all stiff and stuck there. I want this thing flipping around and this is going to be your business hook for the most part. This is the one that's going to be the deepest in the fish and I want it to have a little mobility and be able to really do its job. Turn, you know, corkscrew like I'm the hook's designed. I want it to be able to have some flexibility and really find some meat. So I get it fairly close but it's still, I got it tight, tight but not cinched to where it doesn't move. Crimping it again on one side. Crimping the other half. Those QI hooks are so sharp, they're trying to stick in my hand right now every time I touch my hand to the tip. Now we're going to fold them over. Okay, that's the base hook, that's the bottom. That's the one that's gonna do most of the hooking. Now I'm gonna take the following hook, just like I showed you earlier on the boat when we were salmon fishing, how to tie a, a snow, is we're gonna, we figured our bait, most of my baits, you know, are six to nine inches long, so we're gonna keep it about that amount, right? You can put them longer if you're fishing bigger baits you can make it a little wider but i try to get the hooks close enough to where i think that i'm going to have an opportunity with both of them if you got a big bait you know i mean and you're going for big fish then definitely open it up a little more but what i'm fishing for right i mean i try to keep them close and the baits i'm using is pretty much the reason why i keep them close so I'm going to start here by wrapping away from the crease in the hook where it's creased where I folded them in and got them tight because if you go this way the first part of your hook the, the tension is going to try to drive it into that crack and it really destroys the integrity of the leader in a hurry so I want to roll away from it one two three it's almost three and a half you don't need a lot this line is super heavy then I'm going to start it in just a little ways. And those hooks are sharp. And then I'm going to go one, two, three, four. It's about the same. So you got four wraps there, four here. You can go another one if you want. But it do at least four. So I'll do five maybe. But at least four. Okay. Now I'm going to wet with a little saliva. 
mostly just so the leader is not so hard to pull it through try to keep your kinks out if you can because it ruins the integrity of the leader and now we're just going to tighten it down okay so we got one hook that's really floppy that can do its job and then we got another one that's going to hold the base of the baits and it's stiff it's not going anywhere and if you tie both of these like this they're still going to work but i found by leaving this one to where it can do its job a lot better um the hookups uh, definitely get increased and the land ratio is increased so now we're just going to put we're going to find another bead on the ground <laughs> they're everywhere and we're going to put another 10 millimeter glow in the dark bead on here <clears throat> and then we're going to go to one of the b2 squids i'm going to pull it down when i'm Still keep it pretty close the same length and then I'm gonna tie an overhand knot in this because that's I it doesn't fail. Let me make this a little bit longer. Okay, so it's just make double the loop. Going through once. Going through twice. Make the loop big enough you can get your finger in there so you really got something to pull it down and tighten it up with. It's a real simple knot, but it won't it won't come undone, I guarantee that. I'm gonna trim this off. I'm gonna try to find a lighter and we're gonna burn those ends that work. Alright. You don't need to burn an end on any of the ends that have a, a tie but if you're grabbing them and you're trying to pull the fish in by the leaders like I do a lot it takes the sharpness out of them so but on the crimps please do this to every crimp I know I put everything I had into them but over time they can slip and this will stop them from doing anything so I just dab them a little bit and that's done so anytime you got a crimp this is just kind of a an extra little measure that helps also it keeps the sharp ends from digging into your hands with a violent fish on it and it's really important you bend the main line out of the way so you're not heating or you know damaging the leader in any way all right so there's a circle hook rig ready to rock there's a j hook set up ready to go this one you let the fish eat it and he pretty much hooks himself and you can just reel and it helps bury that barb these ones when you get a bite, you got to set the hook. You got to drive those barbs into them. This is a two different rigs. So bass fisherman, I would definitely put him on this gear. Uh, a young kid, a woman, an elderly man, anybody that doesn't have a lot of knowledge of, of the tackle or knowing how to set the hook hard or have, doesn't have the body strength. This thing is super productive. And if they get hooked right, they just don't come off. Um, these you got to set the hook at the right time and you got to keep the line tight and uh, but this is the one I prefer to fish just because it feels more like I'm fishing but this is two halibut rigs I hope you guys enjoy what you're seeing and uh, I hope this helps you out and makes you productive so know where your meat comes from and whack them and stack them enjoy friends and family and the outdoors if you guys would like to learn a little more about the Teokin uh, hook tip that I've got uh, I got an extra video pumped out already if you'd like to check it out it'll be right here and uh, we got a lot more videos to come so I'm gonna try to pump out a bunch this season and hopefully it helps everybody out and makes you a little more productive on the water see you on the next video